I don't mean to alarm you, but I do believe I got the best footage I've ever gotten on cheap, rubbish, bargain bin, basement gear. And I'm devastated as a full frame owner. I have spent money on that stuff and I don't even need it. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. Yes, the manual focus clutch was on from a previous video. The whole video is out of focus. Why me? When it comes to does gear matter for wildlife or for YouTube, as you can see, gear doesn't matter as long as you have good lighting and a nice studio. But when it comes to wildlife, you're thinking, does it matter? Like, can I get by with less? Of course you could. But of course gear matters. Only people with no money say it doesn't. But when it comes to traveling, I'm on a trip. You think I was going to bring that Sony 200 to 600? Give me a break. I was going to forego wildlife entirely on this trip. My buddy convinced me at the last second to bring this little piece of shit. I am trying to sell it. There's no need to have it, but it is tiny and fun. Side rant. I got an offer for this today. I'm selling it for 470 That's a good deal. You can't pass up on that deal. It's like 650 plus tax new, 800-ish. That's a good deal. He says, will you take 400? Immediately I'm insulted. And then next message, oh, never mind. I find it for 580 on Amazon. That's $110 more than mine, but you wanted mine for 70 less. That's a $270 swing. Thing. No, I don't know math. So I went out on a little trip here. I'm in a fantastic area. There's all this conservation area right by my apartment. I'm in heaven. I saw a bunch of stuff I've never seen before. So we got some cool footage and the best footage I got of this day was with the old Huawei P40 Pro. 7,000 frames, unbelievable. I couldn't, I didn't need this. All the wildlife was coming up to me as you'll see. The funniest moment was immediately I see this morning dove and it's like it was just chilling and then somebody's walking from behind that dove like an old lady and then this dove starts booking it towards me and I'm panicking in manual focus trying to film it and eventually I lost it for a bit and then okay I'm doing it and he just starts like sprinting towards me I'm like is this dove gonna kill me they are fierce you would not want to see a dove in an alleyway at night. I'll tell you that much. I'm lucky I survived this whole encounter. So he came up, debated, like poking my eyes out. And then he's like, no, you're nice. I'll leave. I'll leave you alone. I'll let you live. And he did let me live. And I'm appreciative for my life. So we're just on the Olympus EM-1 Mark III with that 75 to 300 Mark II. I saw a little tiny red squirrel. He was eating something. I switched into 4K. I'm like, 4K really sucks. I wish it was 4K 60, but the OM-1 is not worth upgrading to. And I was like, this is a terrible shot. I got to get closer. So I did. And he still covered. I was like, damn you, twig. Just blocking his nose. I was like, damn it. And then the money shot. I somehow managed to get his face. There's a lot of leaves covering him, but there's just enough there to keep your hope alive. Oh, the cinema was ours. Little red squirrel eating a crab apple. It was funny, these two ladies were walking towards me and they saw me filming something. They had binoculars and I was like, there's a little red squirrel up here or a chipmunk. I don't know what it is. And they were talking and they were like, they could have had a nature show. They were so relaxing. They were just like, oh, that. That squirrel knows the fall colors are coming, so he decides to fatten up on a crab apple. Like, she was so calm, I wanted to watch her show. I subscribed to her binocular show. I got some bullshit duck footage on a log. Fantastic. The tonne of the Micro Four Thirds system is unbelievable. Couldn't believe the separation and 3D pop I was getting. And then out of nowhere, this little chipmunk runs up to me as if he's used to seeing human beings before. Like, I saw like 30, maybe 35 chipmunks. Just every single one I saw ran up to me. It was like touching my feet. It was hilarious. 
back in Toronto, whenever I see a chipmunk, it's a very rare occurrence and they book it immediately. And sometimes they stay still hoping you don't see them. But this one was like coming up to my leg. I was like, is he going to bite me? Um, just take it for the team. He's looking at my sandals and he's like, hey, hey, you got more food. Ah, what's this smell? Oh, God. Oh, this is bad. Oh, man. It's pretty cool that this, like, telephoto can focus that close, though. It's, like, on the floor. That's just a couple of feet away. That really matters for a wildlife lens. Like, my Sony 200 to 600, I think it's, like, two meters or something. Like, it's really far. There's been many times in my life where I'm, like, wanting to get something. I gotta back up a bit. It's not the best. Now, here's where things get dramatic fast. I see this chickadee. Let's look at it. Olympus footage of a chickadee. Not bad. Hey, hey little buddy. You gonna come see me? Oh, see you later. What if I had a phone and nuts in my hand with a motion trigger with 960 frames per second? Yes, I know they can't eat almonds. That's all I had, I thought. But then I realized I had sunflower seeds in the other pocket. And that was the bullshit footage. The 960, it wasn't slow enough. So I was like, they're actually coming to me. 7,000 frames per second, plus 80 frames per second. pretend that that wasn't the coolest thing you ever seen even though this is frame interpolated and you can see it in the wings that's why like da vinci can slow footage down further with its frame blend optical flow but when you have wildlife like this it's just it's never gonna look quite right it's not terrible it's like magical looking his wings are blending but that was just so cool like as he's looking at me slowly as he's landing, turning his head, it reminds me of that movie Justice League where Superman is awake and all the other superheroes are trying to get him on his side but he's freaking out so they're having a battle and like there was this one moment where the Flash, the super slow motion guy, it's like super slow-mo, he's running beside him, he's so fast but Superman is as fast and he just looks slowly and notices the flash running and then the flash is like oh no he's as fast as me that's what that was so that just goes to show you that in the right scenario the gear my phone was the best choice so another wood duck but i got closer to her oh that was cute that was the cuteness i saw this squirrel he was digging he was digging the log he was making bedding potentially it was the cutest thing you ever seen. It's a squirrel. Uh, there was a lot of squirrels. I saw a crow. I never see those in Toronto. They're all over the place here. They're like a pigeon, but black and evil. And I was like panning, trying to find them. It wasn't the best shot you ever seen in your life. I eventually picked him up and there he is. I'm manually focusing, trying to... Everything's in focus though. It's micro four thirds, thank goodness. The worst shot of our time but the footage is good enough it's not like of course this day would have been much better with my sony full frame or the fuji but you have olympus and at least you could bring that with you it was light enough to travel with so oh man i do wish i had the panasonic gh6 with that little leica 50 to 200 i think that's the ultimate lightweight travel system but you get like the best footage ever 
4K 120p, 300 frames, pixel to pixel on that. It's not terrible. It's a 24, 28 ton equivalent. It's not like the end of the world. That Fuji that I had is an 8.4 equivalent, so it's even better, technically. I'm just saying, not much reach on it, but who cares when geese are walking. I also finally managed to get a red bellied woodpecker that has no red in its belly. It's got a little red patch on the back, a little black crested breast. I don't mind that. Don't mind it one bit. I crouched down for a better shot and it was better. It, like position matters so much. If you're just standing there, you see something on the ground and you just point down to the ground, you're a moron. The whole like grass, everything's in focus. There's nothing to it. Whereas if you take the effort, you kneel down, can you lock the focus? Maybe not, but the position's so much better. The reason that's better is because everybody has seen what you're doing. You're standing there, you look down to the ground. Oh, there's that. Nobody's really seen like laying down on the ground looking straight at the animal. So it's unique. It's a unique perspective. You're in their world now. So do it sometimes. Get a little dirty knee. Wear knee pads for many reasons other than wildlife. And one of the coolest things I've ever seen, wild turkeys. I couldn't believe how big they were and scary looking. He was chasing a squirrel. He was like, hey, come here. Oh, come on. I just wanted to talk. They were so close to me that like the smartphone was the better choice for this scene. I don't know why I tried doing 960 frames per second here, but it could have worked. It wasn't a very, I didn't want to get too close. They seemed scary. The lady in front of me said, oh, they're aggressive sometimes. That's not what I like to hear. I want to hear they're calm. They pet you. I did get some footage of them with the Olympus. This was when I first spotted it. I was like, what is that? What, that looks scary and huge. Is it a bear? It wasn't. But then I saw it peeking up. I saw a sign earlier, like at the entrance of the trail that showed turkeys. I was like, am I gonna see a turkey today? Oh man, what a Thanksgiving treat. They were pecking at leaves. How cute is that? Little leaf peckers. They're freaky looking, kind of satanic, like they were punished for some reason. They did bad things in a prior life and now they're here with a freak head, big bodies and people eat them. So it's not the best life, but they were interesting looking. The one had a horn. I forget if this was the female or the other one. This guy had a horn. That's just evil. He's evil. But he means well. He's making up for it in this life. Saw this little kinglet. There we go with not getting a clear shot again. Oh, that is the hardest thing. When there's a bunch of twigs in between, they don't want to be seen. And you're trying to get just that sliver where at least their eyes in focus. And they move a lot, unfortunately, doing acrobatics. You know, I'm very curious to see how the Panasonic GH6 would perform with this lens. I kind of want to do that. Like, you couldn't get lighter than this thing. That'd be funny if it was just so much better, like 4K 120p with this lens being so light. It's just, it's not cheap. It's not like you buy into Panasonic thinking, oh, okay, I'll just get Micro Four Thirds because it's cheaper. It's actually more money than a lot of better options. Penny boy, trying to make up your money. I saw a bunch of new stuff though. Like this one, I don't know if I've seen that before. It looks like... Who knows, just a sparrow or something, but it was cute. You can't say that it wasn't, but this one, he was like blue and white and special. Indeed, he was flying around. I've never seen that before. I don't know what it is. Maybe John Drummond will post down below what it is. He's the expert. I don't have my bird book. Can't even look through anything. But man, he seemed special though. When I saw it, I was like, that's rare, kind of at least for my eyes. Maybe it's common here, but... Oh, he was flying. Oh, look at that. Look at that shot. Oh, what a shot. Oh, the cinema has been brought to you by Kellogg's Corn Flakes. So I'm walking along this trail and these ducks start walking towards me from the river 
I just, I couldn't believe what was happening today. Like everything was so used to people, I guess. People feeding them, I guess it's not a mystery. But like, I was like, these wood ducks, they were right next to me. I, I didn't have any food to feed them. I don't know what they eat, grains, I think. I should have brought some duck food, but maybe they would eat the sunflower seeds, but it was cool having them so close and just desperate and looking. There was like 12 of them or something. They were all looking at me like, what you got? Nothing? Oh, you suck. You suck, man. Is that an Olympus? Oh, man, come on. You couldn't have brought the full frame? Come on, man. On those red demon eyes. This one, you've clearly had a hard knocks life. And things I wish they could go better for you soon. So not bad, Olympus. I had a fun day. And I wouldn't have got it if I didn't bring this, although my smartphone probably would have got everything I needed. I should go out with just this. Get some more 7,000 frames. That was fun times. So gear doesn't always matter. It does, though. Kind of. I don't mind carrying the big heavy Sony when I'm at home and get the extra results, but stable be worse. Color is potentially worse. Back pain. Less money. That's not good. So fun day. Not bad. Olympus, pain in the ass. These two minute files. I'm selling this immediately, even though I love it. Stupid files. Panasonic GH6 with this. No one cares. I'm gonna leave. You thumbing that up. You could buy a Fuji Assassin t-shirt. They're in the shop. That's my favorite design. You're like a ninja. People who want to fight you will be like, hmm, maybe not. Until they try, then they see you're weak. And you'll lose your lunch money, but still. At least you didn't lose your full frame setup. You brought Micro Four Thirds. That's losable. You'll, you'll be okay. I'm gonna go.